In this video, I'm going to talk about how to use Enforcer uh, and what it does and what some of the main pieces of it are. So I'm going to go to the documentation and uh, one of the things I'm going to look at is the service and the annotations that are actually within Enforcer. So let's actually go over to the code and we're going to start off with the service. And in the service there's an enforce method which uh, takes three closures, uh, two of them which can be defaulted. Uh, it takes a predicate, a failure, and a success. The failure is uh, uh, it throws an access denied uh, enforcer exception and the success default uh, just defaults to return true which in most cases is essentially a no op. So basically what I do with all these closures is I set their delegate to be this class and as you can see up here I have actual traits which, which extend what this uh, class can do uh, giving you a role trait and a domain role trait. So this basically turns this service method into a DSL for enforcing business rules. And I'll talk about how to extend this a lot more later, but basically the logic of this is, you know, if the predicate, do the success closure, else do the failure closure. Now there's also a reinforce filter, which takes a filter closure and a uh, object value and runs the um, filter on the object value. Now in the annotations we have uh, enforce which is you know essentially just a proxy for this service and what enforce does is it injects a call to this service at the beginning of a method. Um, you can also apply this to a class level and have it uh, be applied to every method except for if you have one already applied to a particular method, the method level will override the class level. And as you can see here, this, you know, it takes a value, a failure, and a success. The reason I have value here is just because uh, it makes it uh, easier so that, uh, in like say in this example, you know, if all you're doing is the initial one, you, I don't have to specify value. But if I have to do uh, more than just, you know, pass like the predicate one, I have to specify value and failure. I, you know, it's just, uh, it helps make it a little cleaner in the default case. So there's also the reinforce annotation, which this one will inf uh, inject a call to the enforcer service at the end of a method, right before the return statement. Uh, it has the same basic logic and takes the same arguments. Uh, the reinforce and filter, on the other hand, actually takes the last, uh, the return of the, um, of the method and will filter that based on the closure that you pass in. So this allows you to actually filter what uh, you know the what's going to be returned from a method. So let's go back to the documentation here and look at a few examples. So here we're using the enforcer service, and I'm using you know enforce domain role and uh, passing owner. Uh, a domain object and a user. So this becomes, like I said, a very good DSL for enforcing this logic. Now, um, the has domain role, this comes from the domain role trait. So let's switch back here quickly. Domain role trait, which is uh, basically my answer to ACLs. So instead of doing ACLs, I thought it would be um, better to do roles on an object level that have a hierarchy. So this way uh, you have uh, strings which are a lot more readable and queryable uh, uh, and a hierarchy so that uh, you don't have as many rows in the database because ACLs tend to eat up a lot of rows in the database and become uh, hard to manage and query over time. So this was my idea of like a default implementation, which you actually don't have to use. You can replace this and do whatever you want. Uh, same with the role trait. These are just default implementations, which you get by uh, you know installing the plugin. 
but uh, you can actually change these however you want and I'll talk about that more in another video. So let's go back to the documentation and we'll take a look at the enforcer uh, enforce uh, annotation. So this one, you know, it's the same thing as the service. It's just, you know, the logic is on top of the method, um, which kind of gives you that separation so that your, you know, business rules are separate from your business logic, um, which is more of an aesthetic thing. And uh, with this, you have ac you have access to any of the parameters that are passed in, none in this particular example, but any parameters that are passed in, uh, any services or any you know uh, class level variables or anything like that you can actually use in this annotation. Uh, same thing goes for the reinforce annotation. This has you know the same level of access and pretty much does the same thing. And you can use you know just basic Groovy uh, syntax using and ands or you know the 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 uh, slashes for or, or or something like that. Uh, the reinforce filter, which like I said, will actually uh, filter this return uh, using this um, closure. So this uh, particular example here, what I did was I take in um, an object and I you know cast it as a list and do a find results on it. And you know, basically, what I'm doing here is I'm taking everything that is uh, divisible by two and returning that. So the result of this will be two, four, six, uh, eight. So you know, that gives you an idea of what you can do with this. Now, for more examples, there are uh, the unit tests. So if you go uh, into the unit test, which will be installed. Uh, with the application, uh, with the plugin, I should say. Uh, let's see, we can pull the tests up. So, just to give you a quick look, there's uh, one for the service, um, which I, you know, go through a bunch of, you know, tests for the service. Um, there's one for uh, the enforcer annotation, where basically, you know, I have a bunch of the uh, a bunch of examples of how you can use the annotation and actually I came up with a way to I can you know kind of bastardize what uh, Enforce does and make it run as a uh, like a pre-filter filtering uh, the parameters that come in and reassign them so there's there you can do some you know interesting things with that as well um, there's also the reinforce uh, annotation spec, which basically a lot of the same uh, you know cases as uh, Enforcer because it does the same thing just at a uh, different time. This one is also where I, I threw the uh, test for the reinforce filter. I don't have a lot of tests for this, but you know this one is good enough to give you an idea and show you how it works. So that's um, how you can get started using uh, the Enforcer plugin, and I'll see you in the next video.